Hello, and welcome to the Kosh. I'm your host, Timber Smith, and the Kosh is a podcast that spotlights people who have had an association with the Oshkosh or surrounding Fox Cities area. Good morning. How's everybody doing out there, Kosh listeners? Uh, Once again, it is a wonderful, wonderful Saturday morning. Uh, Nice and early. Um, I would do my normal gripe about the weather, but I'm not. You know why? Because it may be a little crisp, but the sun is out. And, God, we've not had sun for a minute, and that sucks. Like, it's super gloomy, super crappy. I need sun. I think we all need sun. I think we've all kind of been, like, a little, just a little less uh Friendly and maybe just a little more edgy. So God bless the fact that we've got some sun today. So we'll take that. Um, This week, let me just say, we're not going to waste a lot of time here because we're going to jump in because I think think we're going to have a super interesting episode. And why? Because once again, I don't know how I keep getting blessed with this, but I got an amazing, amazing guest this week. And so without further ado, this week's guest is Thomas Cannon. Thomas, how are you doing over there? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Timmer. All right. Are we going by Thomas or Tom? Tom. Probably Tom. Tom. Tom's good. Yeah. All right. I figured I, I would just check, but I didn't want to assume anything. Right. Yeah. I don't think I... But I don't think I could be one of those people that Thomas. It must be Thomas. Uh, that, well, that they're know, wrong. That, you yeah, know. I'm not mad at him for it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, but Thomas does feel different than Tom, right? Right. Yeah, without a doubt. All right. Uh, so, Thomas, um, how are you doing this morning? I am uh, doing great. Like you said, sunny day after rainy, gloomy days. Yeah, so it's going to be a good day. I think so. I think so. All right, um, Tom, can you please share a little something about yourself and uh, what's your connection to the cash? Absolutely. So, like in 1992, I uh, moved to Oshkosh to go back, to go to UW Oshkosh to uh, get my teaching certification. Um, So I moved here and I started school and eventually I was working at the old kitchen in the Mercy Medical Center down on Hazel Street. Oh, and uh, that's where I met my wife. She worked in the cafe. I worked in the kitchen. Oh. And uh, just stayed in the area ever since. Uh, we have three kids and two grandkids that still live in Oshkosh. Um, and then uh, late last year, I w- uh, became the inaugural Poet Laureate of Oshkosh. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, like, right there, we got to talk about that. Because... Mm-hmm. I don't know what that means. As a matter of fact, I didn't know what a poet laureate was until they had that young lady who, you know, was at um, Amanda Gorman. Yeah, Amanda Gorman. Right. And I watched that and I was just blown away. Right. And that was the first time I ever, you know, heard the term. And even then. I just knew that it meant like you were like a super poet in my mind, <laughs> like you had an right. S on your chest. So, so can you explain that to the cash listeners and myself? Yes, because I don't know that I can define it, but I have, but like you, and that Amanda Gorman is kind of the reason why the poet laureate position was created. Mayor Palmieri saw that, saw how inspiring she was. And so She's like, I want that in, uh, for Oshkosh. Oh. Yes. So uh, Mayor Palmieri had to do with this. Yes. Very cool. Yes. She, yep. Which, and I didn't know I didn't know about it until after she, she called me and said, you've been selected as the Poet Laureate, you know, Bruh. because, <laughs> because she, you know, she's, a, you know, I, like Amanda Gorman, she's really helped healing, you know, different communities, and we want that for Oshkosh. And I went, then you picked the wrong person because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't do that. I'm not. I can't be as inspiring as she can. Um, but uh, so I, what I knew about poet laureates is, I had met like some Wisconsin poet laureates. I've gone to their um, workshops and heard them speak. Uh, there was. Uh, 
Car- Carla Houston from Appleton. She was a poet laureate. And uh, the current Wisconsin poet laureate is Dasha Kelly Hamilton. And, uh, you know, they go around and they talk to people and they, and they read their speeches and I uh, read their poems rather. And so my role, because I'm the first one, it's still kind of getting defined. Okay. Um, but it's just to promote poetry, get it out there and just any creativity, anybody that's interested in poetry will want to foster that and encourage them. And that's my role. That's pretty awesome actually. Um, and big fat shout out to the mayor. Uh, Lori, uh, Palmieri, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty sweet. Um, so have you any, has there been any events or venues you've gotten to participate in yet, or is it still in the making? Cause I mean, I understand we, we we're really just coming out of COVID. Right. And that, and that's my application. I'm like, well, I'll do what I can, you know, with COVID going on. And so I focused on, on, uh, Social media. So I developed the Poet Laureate uh, group. Face, on Facebook, I developed a group called Oshkosh Poet Laureate so that people could come together in, and talk about it. I could share some stuff. Um, and I've had two workshops. Uh, one was on March 26th, and then one was March, uh, or April 2nd for the, uh, ch- for the kids, down, both at the library. Um, not well attended, I think, because of COVID and people right. are, um, but that's pretty exciting. And then we're going to, I'm going to speak in uh, early May, May 6th and 7th. Oshkosh awesome. has Lake Fly Writers Conference. <laughs> the Lake Fly Writers. Right. Uh, fitting. <laughs> yep. Yep. Usually uh, all our attendees come, you know, like the same week that the uh, Lake Flies come. Uh, so I'll be giving a presentation there and an open mic on the, the, that Friday, which people can come to. That's pretty awesome. Okay. Um, and yeah, I understand uh, the attendance thing. Um, I'm going to give you a, an uh, unsolicited suggestion that uh, you should have the poet and barbecue event <laughs> because uh, people come. <laughs> <laughs> That's that is a great idea. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, barbecue brings the brings the droves, and uh, you know, and then I think barbecue might help the creative mind uh, in its uh, writing <laughs> process. <laughs> or maybe that's just me. I'm biased. <laughs> so if I have one, you'll come. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I. Well, I'll tell you what. I will come. Not only will I come if you put a grill in front of me, I'll grill something for the people. Okay. You heard it here. Uh, folks, I did volunteer to work the grill. Okay, so uh, a, a spatula and then a piece of paper and a pencil, so you can write a poem while you're grilling. While well, I do it, yes, and and it will, it will, it will be about barbecuing or smoking something. <laughs> yes, like a blues song. <laughs> yes. All right. Awesome. Um, you ready to jump into the first segment? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. The first segment is what in the world is going on with? This is where you start with the phrase what in the world is going on with, and you tell us what's on your mind. So, Tom, what's going on? I just wonder what's going on with uh, civility. It just seems like, and I don't understand that COVID has really stressed people out and stuff, but it just see a lot of incidences of where you're interacting with people on their job, you know, custo- you know, customer service, but even just in people's daily jobs, where they just kind of, they kind of stop caring. This is what I'm going to do, and I, I may be rude, and you just, you're going to handle it, you know. And I don't put all the blame on them, I, but, you know, I think that um, owners and employers could do a better job of <laughs> creating an environment where people are happy, but it just seems to be an epidemic to me. Well, it's kind of a, I think there's a lot of dynamics going on when it comes to the customer service at this point in time, right? Because you've kind of got this dynamic of um, there traditionally in in, um, places where you want a good customer service are not usually great paying jobs. Right, absolutely. Right, and when people, the people were crying about, hey, you know, we'd like to be paid more, the people said, go get a better job. 
Well, guess what? You chased out your good customer service, and now you got what's left, mm-hmm. right? And not everybody's meant for customer service. <laughs> this is it's true. just true. It takes a certain personality type. It's a skill. It is a skill to have good customer service. It is also an attitude, and that's not easy, you know? Yep. Then, because of the frustration of the consumer, uh, they're not helping the matters either because they're ex- they're s- expressing their their frustration. So then it's just this. I feel like it's this vicious cycle going on. Yep. Yeah, I I agree with that. And uh, but I actually hope for those people that you know doing better would make them happier. You know, mm-hmm. I'm all I uh, I wrote a book called The Tower of Apathy, and it's about people hating their jobs actually. <laughs> Bruh. Who who would hate their job? <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a group of people called everybody, <laughs> and uh, and so it does, and you know it can be, and I, it's a humorous book, so I find a lot of humor in that. But when it comes down to it, when you're miserable and you want to spread that, then you become even more miserable yourself. Yeah, um, I do agree with that. Uh, Without a doubt. But like you said, though, I probably this, it's still the number of people serving people compa- being rude compared to the number of people interacting with them is less. Like <laughs> they're getting a lot of flack, right? They're getting a lot they're, of flack. A lot of times they just. Yeah. I And and like, I, I don't know. I've been lucky enough to run into people and I've worked customer service. I've done the tough stuff. And I feel like I almost feel like there should be a hazing process of, of people before they get into full adulthood where everybody should work fast food, retail, mm-hmm. uh, like customer service on the floor um, in a call center. Like oh, call center. Yeah. Uh, well, I've done all of them. And those are the things like those are tough environments where you it humbles you and then you also understand you know what 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 the person on the other side of that is feeling or what they're dealing with Mm -hmm. and therefore like when I have interactions with customer service people like I'm I'm about as humble and as pleasant because I don't feel that far removed Matter of fact, I don't feel oh. removed at all from it. I put myself in their shoes, and I feel it's my job as the consumer is to make this interaction as pleasant as pos- possible because they got another 100 or 200 that day to do. Mm-hmm. So my one, if I can be really pleasant and say hello and ask them, you know, are you having a good day today and those kinds of things, um, that might carry them through the day. And it might make the mm-hmm. next customer's interaction better. So I actually, I'm really thoughtful about that. My interactions with like cashiers and salespeople and all of that, because it matters. Yes. And I think I'm pretty careful. I've just like, the thing that kind of spawned me, it wasn't the only thing, but I was at a chain coffee shop, which maybe I was getting what I deserved. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, yeah, <I> maybe <laughs> should have frequented uh, our local communities, but I wasn't. And just to see somebody, uh, oh, a, po- a lady came up who was apologetic. Oh, I'm sorry, but this is what I wanted. And the lady just kind of looked, the worker looked at her and looked, gave her a glance and threw the cup away and then slammed it down. And and uh, you know, and then I then I talked to her and she was rude too, but. I'm a big guy, so I try to be I try to be friendly and right. not rough. Because right, because like you have a because you are a really tall gentleman, that perception yeah. is even larger than what it even may be. Right. Yep. There. Are, yeah, I'm very cognizant that that they might be already a little nervous, or what I'm going to be say is going to be tr- interpreted, you know, as a little scarier. Yeah. No, that's that's fair. Okay. Um, my what in the world is going on with what in the world is going on with voting? And, and here's my problem. Um, so I like to do the absentee ballot, mm-hmm. right? And get the absentee ballot and get it for me and the wife, bring them here to the house. And before I could just go fill it out and, um, put it in envelopes, do all the things, whatever they want, check this box, sign this, put the address in. And my wife would take our ballots and go drop them off at City Hall. 
mm-hmm. at the Dropbox. You can no longer do that because you've got to drop it off individually. So give my wife the ballot, which is just me filling it out and leaving it on mm-hmm. the kitchen table. She takes both our ballots, goes to drop them off. You, there's no longer, you're not allowed to drop them off in the drop box anymore. You must take them and give them to somebody. And she goes to give them and they're like, you, which one's yours? Well, this one, I can't take the other one. What is that? Cause here's my thing. Seriously. There's not that voter fraud. Right. This is mm-hmm. dumb. Dumb. That's just dumb. So your spouse can't take it. You can see right there on the name, same address, this person that wife's telling you this is my spouse's. But no, we must individually drop them off separately. Why? That's just the the, the, the voter suppression tactics is dumb. And I and here's my thing. I could see if there was actually a problem, but there right. just isn't. There was never a problem. It's never been a problem. Right. It's funny when one, when one party wins, no one says there's a problem with voter fraud. Right? right yeah. and, and so I have a problem with, with things being put in place to just make it more difficult. Seriously, this is a local election. What are we what are we trying to overturn in this local <laughs> election that you feel the need to make this harder to do? Yes, it it, it has to be a, an overall attempt to suppress because there's no facts, there's nothing that nothing. There's just nothing. There's just people saying there is. And so, yeah, the, the, give me some facts. Show me some evidence. Do something other than just doing it to do it. And here's my thing. I think what's eventually going to happen is the people who are putting these things in place, it's going to hurt their vote. Right. Because that's eventually what's going to happen. It's going to actually, the people who are trying to do it to help them, eventually you're going to suppress your own voters because it's hard for everyone. Yeah, because eventually they're going to need the votes. Yeah. And and uh, things have things have changed. Life has changed. Our cultures have changed. People's lives are a lot busier. Yes. So it has to change, you know. And it did change, without any bad effects, really. Wait, I'm not even asking for it to change. I'm just asking for it to operate oh, the way it always had. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't. If it had operated this well for this long, why all of a sudden do we need more, uh, more protocols in place? If I remember something, you know, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna I try not to get too political because right. you know I I don't operate from a political space myself per se, and I try to stay in a nonpartisan space. But if I remember something, I think there was a party that used to be the party that fought against bureaucracy. Oh, <laughs> they were the ones that were like less government. They were the ones that said less things in our way to do things. Get to work. Yep. Make it less. <laughs> That's my problem. <laughs> do the things that you say you represent. That's what I'm asking for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. That's where I'm at with it. <laughs> Sorry. That one that one just made me super frustrated. Yep. I've been I'm listening just, and you usually do stay away you stay away from you don't avoid it. But usually you you're not yeah because I don't even because I don't think there's a wrong party no I, I agree with that right um, I'm not I don't I don't think one party is right and one party's wrong um, or any of that I just want common sense things and I want our government to work in a common sense way and I don't care what your affiliation is but this isn't common sense. And that's why I'm frustrated. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) Another trip for no reason. Another trip for no reason. A waste. Um, all right. Segment two. Our next segment is word associations. Uh, this is your opportunity. I'm going to say a word and you tell me what comes to mind. So the first word is food. Air fryer. (laughs) <laughs> oh, Bruh. I like that. Yeah. Okay, break that down. Yeah, my um, my wife and I have 
we got the air fryer out and uh, we don't have a lot of space in our kitchen. But we find that just kind of staying there because you can pretty much put anything that you want in there. You know, of course, you got the, the typical uh, stuff you would fry, but you can make like, put like ham and cheese and a biscuit, and put it in there and it cooks it up. We've cooked uh, different types of meats and stuff in there. I like uh, me. I have an air fryer. Uh, and uh, the people that know know me. I am an Instapot fanatic. I mm. love the Instapot, and so Instapot made an air fryer, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna buy the Instapot air fryer, and uh, we make fish in it, mm-hmm. and it comes out just fantastic. Yes. So I like that one. All right, <laughs> um, cocktail or beer? Uh, well, I uh, I enjoy. Beer, I really kind of enjoy when we do go out to go down to Fletch's and, you know, take one of those Oshkosh local craft beers, and they're very tasty. But the thing I find I look forward to is going uh, going to a beer garden during a, a, the farmer's market and having me a Bloody Mary. Oh, <laughs> yes. Where's your, do you got a favorite place? Who's doing it the best? Ah, uh, the best. Or your favorite. Uh, yeah, we the side yard's nice. But I think that the um, mag- magnet, I think we really enjoyed that. But now it's closed. Mm. Yes. Oh, yes, that's right. Mm. I forgot that that's closed. Okay. I um, For the farmer's market, I, I like to slide to Oblios. Mm. I heard they have really good Bloody Marys. Yeah, they, they do a pretty good job there. Okay, I like that. Bloody Marys it is. Is yeah. there, Have you had one of those crazy Bloody Marys where they put all the things on it? Uh, yes, I think it's time to revisit that. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Uh, but there used to be a small, I think it's closed now, I'm pretty sure it's closed, but out on Jackson. like Roy's. Roy's. Yeah. And we went there one time and it was just, it was packed, but it came with, you know, cheeseburger and you name it, it was stuck into that thing and that was really good yeah uh roy yeah roy's is closed now i don't know what's going to happen there but uh yeah that hasn't been it's been a couple of years i think that that might have happened pre-covid even maybe Impossible. over covid but uh yeah <laughs> never got to have one of those but i saw some pictures of those they look interesting okay mm-hmm. um streaming uh uh, Hoopla. My wife has really been into Hoopla lately. It's a free app, and it's sponsored by the Oshkosh Public Library. So you go there and you put your library card in, and then just one time, and then it has audio books and I think ebooks and different videos to stream. And that's a great way to get free materials, materials that you might go, you might want from the library, but you can get it without having to go there. What have you uh, What have you downloaded lately? That's what I should ask. Uh, there's There's a a Wisconsin author, um, Larry Watson, Doctor Larry Watson, and he's I, was it something with Pritchard. I don't remember the full title of it, but um, he's had a lot of books. Uh, Montana, nineteen forty eight, and. Uh, and the whole series, is, most of his books are set out in, in uh, Montana, of course. Um, but he, and, oh, and he was, his recent one of his books was uh, Let It Go, and it was made into a movie with Kevin Costner. Uh, he's just a fantastic writer, and uh, he used to be my professor at UW-Stevens Point. Oh, okay. I'm a... Um I've used Hoopla and it's amazing. And uh, just for the cash listeners out there, like uh, you can download this in your uh, whatever your app store is that you're using Google app store, the Apple store. Um, And then if you go to the library, they'll actually help you set it up. Mm. Like they're super nice. And I use it and download eBooks or or, um, I do more audiobooks, but you can mm-hmm. download audiobooks. You get them for like two weeks. You never have to leave the comfort of your home. You can do comic books. You can do mm-hmm. movies. Like what you have access to is amazing. And you get like five a month. I believe it's five downloads a month. Mm-hmm. So I I used to 
I used to like it quite a bit. I used to download a comic here. You could do magazines too. You could do. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Like, and uh, so I get an ebook, uh, get a audio book, a comic book, a magazine, like, and I'm still got one more download <laughs> left and that was pretty good. So I, I, it's super slick how it works. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm an author, so I want people to buy books, <laughs> but I also want people to support the library. And I think that that, I think the library has an accountability and, so the more people use their services, the more the city can go. We like that. We want to keep funding that. Absolutely. And that's super important to fund the library. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, shop local. Uh, I really like uh, the businesses that previous guests have suggested and stuff. Uh, and But I have to go with, uh, I want to give a pitch for the local authors. If you can find a local author, Oshkosh has them, and if you can, you know, buy just one of their books, maybe or one local book per year. You're doing, a, you're really supporting somebody. You're supporting your community. You're supporting your neighbor who has really put hours upon hours into something. Um, and so I'm big on that. And there's, um, and I'm thinking of the Juliet Rosetti. Uh, Daisy Jericho, uh, uh, Sally Cisna. Um, I think I'm going to have to start using social media and promoting these people. You, yeah, and I do believe you just did some shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's doing shout outs. He didn't even know he was doing shout outs. <laughs> no, <I didn't. laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> you know, I went to the grand opening of the uh, venue 404. I do believe that's the name of the yes. over there on the corner yes. of uh, Main Street in Algoma. Um, and there was a young lady in there selling yes. her book. And I, I wanted to buy it so bad because I, I, I don't know what it was, but when I walked past her, um, and I don't remember what the book was about, but it was something about her, this young lady, and mm-hmm. she was young, yes, uh, selling the book, and I just wanted to support her so bad, and I just didn't have <laughs> the cash on hand at me at that particular moment. But if I see her again the next time I got her, I'm going to buy a book because um, – I feel you on that one. Like uh, so much goes into a book. It's so personal and to have local authors um, one book a year, I can do one book a year. That's like, that's yes. not bad at all. And I would love to support that. I, I went to that open house as well. And I saw her there and uh, first I blew by her because I was jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Did, what, you didn't think to set up a table. <laughs> yes. Yes. Tom. And I, <laughs> And I didn't want to, I didn't want somebody so young having more success than me. But I, I actually went I was looking for it this morning. I, I did I went back and I bought that book and my wife and I had a discussion with her and I wish it, I'm going to find the find the book and well read it and post it and just because that she was a, a lovely young lady and yes. Do you remember her name? Uh, no, I don't. All right. Well, um, if you just happen to be out there listening and you know who you are and you know we're talking about you right now, I would love to have you as a guest oh, on the Kosh. So, uh, you know, reach out and uh, ask the Kosh at gmail.com and uh, love to have you as a guest so we can talk about your book. Oh, yes. Because, I mean, writing a book is actually, I mean, it's a huge undertaking. And then you know, to get to publish it. And if I think she probably self published it to pick out the cover and then to go out there to put that table out there yes. and say, this is my book. I mean, that's, yeah, it's, that's, it's, it's gotta be, be um, empowering and vulnerable all in the same breath. Yes. I am going to have to get her name. I, and my sister-in-law was like, Oh, I just put her book on reserve. So it's at the Ashkosh public library as well. So, okay. No, I want, I want to check that out. Uh, I've always secretly wanted to write a book, um, but I don't know if I can. Uh, it's one of those that I got to do that a little closer to end of life because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the world needs to know all of Timber's adventures. I don't think they're oh, ready think for they those. Do. No, no. Man. Uh, if I had a book, it would be called You Don't Want These Problems. <laughs> Believe that. Okay. Um, 
literature. Uh, actually, that was my literature was talking about that young girl that was at that open house. Okay. And uh, again, I'm reading Juliet Rossetti's book. Um, yeah, so there's just a lot of literature from area, from local uh, uh, Wisconsin writers. Michael Perry is a huge name. Uh, Nicholas Butler, uh, Liam Callahan, okay. representing Wisconsin. All right. Tom over here doing more shout outs than he's <laughs> not even saying. <laughs> 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 I'm just going to keep calling you out, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> you should, yeah. All right. Uh, community. I feel like I'm uh, just hitting one note here, but for me, the community is, is in the Oshkosh writing community. It's a growing community. Try to just reach out and support each other. And uh, and it's it's kind of small, but it's it's very wonderful. It's very supporting. Like probably almost 20 years ago, uh, Ruth Percy from the Oshkosh Public Library, she started this writer's group. Okay. You know, and I, I was going to ask if there was an organized group. Yes, and I think there's a couple others. But, yeah, like first and third Saturday, the Oshkosh Writers Club uh, meets, meets in the library. Over COVID, it, mo- it met on Zoom. Um, but it's, it's an eclectic group. Uh, but I just remember... Coming there and there's a circle, you know, we got like five chairs out for that first meeting. And before they get started, I think they had to make the room bigger. There's like 36 people. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, it, you meet a lot of interesting people. A lot of people that I, I find really memorable. Uh, and they're actually people that inspired me to uh, go for the Poet Laureate. Um, because like you said, you like the... Poet Laureate is the super poet. Well, I don't know that I fit that bill. I do have uh, quite a, I've been writing poems forever for a long time. I have quite a few published, like in journals and things like that. But I don't go around with the poet hat on. But I met lots of people in that group that didn't even have books published, but they were poets. Um <laughs> Gonna do some shout outs, but these I think these people passed away. Uh-oh. There's an LA lady, Dorothy Maxwell, and uh, she just she had her, her family had her book, her poems bound just you know at Kinko's, and the same with Carl Schultz. These people they came, they had their poems. You know, I remember Carl, he'd come into the writers group, and the writers group is to critique things. Here's something, how can you help me? How can you make it better? Nice. And so you just don't want somebody to come in and read, but he had a pass because it was just neat to have him come in, pull the uh, poem out of his pocket, unfold it, and then. Did he, wait, wait I, just so the Kosh listeners know, like there's a hand gestures going <laughs> on right now. And he apparently he might have put it in his uh, in his shirt pocket, like, right? Yes, like it's probably folded. Right. He was one of those authentic. Old time guys, you know, had the flannel shirt with the two pockets and the suspenders, and and he just delighted as he read his read his poems. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, I don't think writer community counts. Um, it's nice to know there's a formal um, group for writers. I think a lot of people would like to know that. So we will make sure that we put that in the podcast notes. Okay. So uh, Tom, make sure that, uh, you know, I don't want le- send me links. If there's oh, links, yeah, uh, Facebook links, uh, hopefully I'm wondering if there's any social media ones. Cause that seems like that would be a good place also where there should be a, a local writers group where there's that connection of some sort. So, so like they, um, like they post online and things like that. Maybe within the group, it could be a private group or something like that. It just seems like that would be smart, right? Yeah. Because it's easy. I, here's my thing. I'm always uh, thinking take things, take the things tr- how it was done traditionally and modernize. Mm-hmm. And that would be the modernization of the group. Yes. And when we were meeting over Zoom, uh, it was. I th- th- Boot camp, I think it was, where you could mm. share it. Okay. But I am, I'm in. There's another, more informal group that I, um, I am a member of, and you just did Google Drives. Ah, okay. But 
There you go. Like that. Yes. Um, Kosh Hidden Gems. That's uh, our next segment, and this is your opportunity to talk about something uh, in the Kosh or the Fox Cities area that you think is a gem and uh, maybe tell some things about it uh, of why of why you think it's awesome. And I mean, hopefully it's something that uh, our Kosh listeners can learn from. Okay. Well, I swear I have interests outside of writing, a few, but my hidden gem is that Lake Fly Writers Conference. It's held every May. Uh, this year it's May 6th and 7th. Um, it's been going on for several years. It didn't go on last year. Uh, I've been part of the planning committee since the beginning, uh, and not to take credit, but the people around me, it's just wonderful. They said, okay, we want a quality uh, program. We want people to, to find value in it. We want to bring in speakers that are going to help other writers. And it's really reasonably priced. And uh, the Oshkosh Public Library kind of is a sponsor of it. And uh, they said, no, it needs to be downtown. We need to support the downtown. So it's, it's held at the convention center every year. Awesome. Is it just a one-day event or is it multiple days? It's a, it's a two-day event. It's May 6th and 7th this year. I'm actually going to have a poetry workshop on the 6th. I think it begins in the afternoon on Friday. Um, any who, Do you got any keynotes or anything? Uh, yes, this year, and I, um, I can't. Well, we'll give you, a, we'll give you an opportunity to look that okay. up. But, um, that sounds like a really cool, that's a new one. That is definitely <laughs> a new Oshkosh gem. Yeah, I don't think that a lot of people know about it. No, I, well, I, not that I know everything, but I, I can say that I didn't know it exists, but I do know there's a lot of people who would like to, know that exists probably uh a lot of people over in that uh what i will say the english department of uw oshkosh perhaps Mm -hmm. (laughs) you probably have some of them already Uh, all right that's fantastic um we can come back and talk uh if you come up i will put a link uh is there is there a website yes there is lakefirewritersconference.org um and we've had some really well-known uh, um, keynotes, um, and like we had the one of the lawyers for uh, what's his name the the murderer for you know the movie the the Netflix thing about making of a murderer. Oh, yeah, we had one of those lawyers. He was a keynote. Okay, and now uh, that would be interesting. Yes, it was interesting, and uh, in past years we had coroner come and talk about that so that writers that wanted to talk about murders <laughs> could get some food for thought. What? <laughs> wow. And uh, so this year, um, I don't know if he's very well known, but Dean Robbins, he's big in Milwaukee, and he's just a very good speaker. And um, probably, and I don't, David Michael Williams, he's not a huge uh you know, well-known author. I don't know that he's going to bring a lot of names in, but he's pretty well-known in the Fox Valley. He's a Fond du Lac writer, and um, he has a bunch of books out, and he's just, we've had him in the past, and he's just a really good speaker and helps those writers out that like to write fantasy and, and things like that. Okay. Awesome. Um, we will be sure to put some podcast notes about yes. the conference because I think that'll be a great connection. Mm-hmm. All right. What's the cash need? I am going to steal uh, Grace Lim's answer. <laughs> we oh. need a uh, we need a, an indie bookstore. Um, there, I, recently I found that I discovered the bookstore up in Appleton, and that's the kind of bookstore that I I like. You know, I like Barnes and Noble. That's cool, but I want that uh, bookstore where it has new and used books. You know, and they have just had books crammed on these big shelves and. You never really know what you can come back next week and there'll be something you didn't expect because no. somebody had returned a book, sold a book, they found a book. And um, I think we need that. Yeah. I think that would be cool. I like bookstores because uh, you never know what you're going to. It's much like the library, too. Like mm-hmm. I like I like rummaging through the library and just going to sections and be like, oh, I never 
heard of this or saw this or any of that. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Bookstore. Um, Next segment. The next segment is the Naughty Slash Heroes Corner. Uh, the Naughty Slash Heroes Corner is where you nominate something, someone, of uh, uh, an organization, whatever, to the Naughty or Heroes Corner. All right, Tom, what do you have for us? Uh, I wish I had a, a, a Naughty for you, but I just I have heroes. And uh, so I nominate uh, Damascus Road and organizations like those. Um Damascus Road fights sex trafficking. And uh, we, my wife and I toured uh, Damascus Road during that 404 venue. I've toured it before. It's just a place where people have gotten together and really f- uh, fight right in the trenches trying to get girls, save girls from being sex trafficked and getting the word out there, helping to educate uh, young women to avoid things like that. Okay. Um, okay, shout out to them. Yes. And, uh, and I did see them. We walked through their, I don't know if, um, I would call it a store or they had tables. Oh, yes, and yes. They did walk through there and, and got and had spoke to someone so they could explain a little bit more about the organization and, and you know, their purpose and stuff. And there's other organizations, too, that do that. I think they... I've seen that the Highway 41 is a real corridor for trafficking, and but Damascus Road is, you know, the one that comes to mind. There's lots of great organizations, you know, the, there's organizations in Oshkosh that are just filled with dedicated people that just put hours after hours in, you know, just to make people's lives better. That's a fact. Couldn't agree more with that mm-hmm. one. All right. Uh, you said you had more than one. Is there more than one? Uh, no. Uh, well, just one of those people that I know that I don't think she, she's not involved in Damascus Road, but Deb Martin, she's involved in organization after organization uh, that's just, you know, relentless with trying to help people and so many organizations. And one of the things that as Poet Laureate, one of the first things I got tasked was, was she contacted me on the Poet Laureate uh, group. She's like, hey, write a, would you write a poem for um, uh, Transit Equity Day? Oh. Yes, and I didn't know a lot about that, and I don't know that I can, my poems are like more personal. Yeah. And uh, and also, I do recognize like, like I, I do get a small stipend from, Gosh, gosh. So I don't want uh, pe- people on the other side, you know, I don't want to be divisive so that somebody's like, I pay my taxes and he's ta- she, he's arguing something I disagree with. So I want to avoid that. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I there's probably, there's some value. There's, I don't disagree with them. But I thought like Transit Equity Day is something that, you know, if you, it's like kind of like the, um, you know, the, the voting. If you want to get extreme about it, then there are sides. But if people just on both um, liberal, conservative, people that want to solve problems, transit equity can be one of those things, you know. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. And um, I'm big for public transportation. Provide ways, whether you have means or don't have means. Public transportation is pretty cool. In a great way, you know, for whatever the reasons is or your purpose is. Me, I just hate driving. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't look. I'm not trying to save the 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 trees, the environment, or none of that. Like, if I could just catch a bus because I hate driving, yeah. I'd catch a bus. And when I didn't have a car until after I was over the oh. age of 21, mm. um, and I, when I lived in Milwaukee, I caught the bus everywhere. So I mean, like, busing isn't that bad. It's not convenient, convenient, right. but it's a means and it's nice not to have to think. And I don't know, there's a humbleness in it. It grounds you. Yes. Yep. And, uh, Deb Martin would probably be a better person that could really tell you, but I do see that there is an equity in it and it costs money, but it's getting people two jobs. It's getting, it's a necessary, some, you can't look at it as here. I'm driving my SUV why do we need a bus for it? You have to look at it as somebody who can't afford a car 
and they need to get places. And not even just uh, take the financial out of it. You know who else catches the bus a lot? Are people with disabilities, yes. um, elderly, um, mentally ill. Um, they, like, there's a lot of different people who utilize public transit. And, you know, yeah, it's, it's there to be utilized. It is to e- create equality. Yeah, I'm glad that you said that because, yeah, if somebody has a disability, whether it's mental or physical, and they can't drive a car, if you don't have public transportation, then you're kind of relegating them to just being at home, you know? So and you have to be able to support people so they can do what everybody else can, you know? So if somebody else goes to a job or somebody else can go to the movie – then somebody with a disability ought to be able to do, should be doing the same thing. You know who else utilizes public transit? Students. Student. Mm-hmm. College students. Oh, yes. Yeah, a lot. And students that go to school, a lot. So there's another one. Like, there's, it, it, as you can tell, the public transportation is <laughs> kind of near and dear to me. Um, but the utilization factor, um, you can't, you can't get lost in your privilege. Yes. You know, and forget there's all of these people and it's not not even necessarily who you think, not the people without who are utilizing these services. There's a lot of people with that utilize the services. Uh-huh. Um, it's just the point that it's an, transportation is too important to not make access, as readily accessible as possible to as mm-hmm. many people as possible. Yeah, and speaking of somebody who used to walk, park the car and walk blocks and blocks and blocks to my class at Clo or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of all those smart people that get dropped off right at the shelter by the the, the reunion. <laughs> Facts. Facts. That is so, so true. Okay. Um, anything else you want to add on that? Hmm. No, I think I'm pretty good. Okay. Awesome. Well, we're at that time of the show. And you know what time that is? Let me help you out with that. You know, every time we play this music, there's such a big giggle in the room. Mm-hmm. And it that means it is time for the topic of the week. And the topic of this week is... National Poetry Month. Uh oh. <laughs> yes. Yes. Let's get into this time. I, as the poet laureate, I, I'm kind of more of a poetry all year, poetry all year long type thing. But the, um, but it's something that should have its own month. Other things do. Um, and so, and Oshkosh is really trying to promote that as well. They're, um, down in the library, they have a poet tree where young people can pick out a leaf, write a poem on it, attach a poem to it, and then they put it up on the wall. Oh. Because, you know, I think that you know, poets used to be young poets. I think that's where they get their start, and hopefully less, you know, keep people from dropping off from doing poetry. Bruh. Facts. <laughs> and even if they're in, um, even if they're high school age, they don't have to go and fill out a leaf, but they go to Oshkosh Public Library, go to their website, and they have a place where you can email your letter to. Uh, this month also began a poetry walk downtown. Oh, There's different poems up in different businesses, and so you can take a stroll and, and check out some of the poems that people submitted. We had 180 submissions. For this thing, and they picked out like twenty of them. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. That's big, actually. Yes, I, I, people were pretty overwhelmed. I'm new on the inaugural, so I don't know the. <laughs> I don't know if it's good or bad, but <laughs> I like that. Okay, um, what is there any other things happening? You know, this is on my mind, so I'm going to say it. You know, like uh, I work for the city of Appleton right now, and. Um, they do this cool thing where they get 
poems from the community and then they imprint them in sidewalk blocks. Oh. And so like in random places on pathways, there's this cement square with this poem in it. Mm. Um, I would love, and, I, and I'm saying this so that those uh, people in our public, <laughs> our, our local government, and maybe, um, you know, our mayor, if there's any influence there, you know, maybe mm-hmm. that's a cool idea of something that could be done. Because it, it, yeah. it brings a personality. Um, it, makes, it makes it personal um, who our residents are of the city. Uh, yes, yes, and it's. I read through, you know, I, I saw I saw the all the entries, and yeah, it's amazing what people uh, talked about in their poems and how they wrote it and how they, you know, wanted to express themselves. Any favorites? Anything that sticks out in your mind? Uh, probably the top one, and it's downtown in one of the stores. It's uh, just a poem about. Uh, it's not deep, but it's talking about. Uh, somebody who brings home a elephant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> okay. I'm with that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then some of the poems that wouldn't really fit because there was poems that uh, about people talking about uh, abusing substances or kind of, or a rough childhood. And, um, I, it didn't seem appropriate, you know, but that downtown you're walking and you're looking through things, right. but you know that, I think that's really what poems are about. I think that's how they start, right? Is somebody's upset and they're trying to process something. They're trying to figure things out and they just motivated to get it out on the paper. And I think that that's a great thing. And, uh, just, I think that as you write and I find myself doing that, even just journaling, writing out your problem not in a journalist write it out like you're going down you're gonna uh, i'm gonna write this on and all of a sudden you start writing and thoughts that you didn't have all of a sudden are coming up and sometimes solutions come up because you are activating a different part of your brain when you're putting it onto paper when you're using your hands to create words and it just expands what you're thinking about and maybe reframes it and I am a big proponent of writing a, po- a poem to take control of the situation. Something happened to you, and you want to, you know, write it out and take control of it. This is your story, and I think that as you make it into a story, you kind of separate your, yourself, the pain from it, and then you kind of take control of it. But I also want to really encourage people to write happy poems, and this is you know, poems about stuff that they that make them happy because we forget about those details. So let's sit there and write a poem. I know some people are probably like, no, thank you. <laughs> eh, I don't know. But, you, you know, my, uh, somebody that you, especially if somebody you love, you know, or your children or your significant other, they will appreciate a poem. But if you can just sit there and, you know, I, I love them. And so and these are the reasons why. And you can really hone it in, give it to them. I mean, they're going to feel great about it. And you get to sit there and savor it. You're just thinking about it. You're spending some time going, this is why I really love this person. This is why I really love this thing. And uh, scientists say that that's a habit of a happy person is to sit back and be able to savor something. Right. And then when you present the poem, then you're able to then just spend some more time with it. Okay. That's deep. <laughs> um, do we have like any, uh, I don't know what they call them, like when poets gathered, or not even poets, when people gather and poetry is shared, like poetry slams or anything. Do we have any of that locally that you know of? Uh no, we, is that the correct term? Poetry, I think poetry slam is um, uh, a term that I think I don't know that there's a real big difference, but some people call it poetry slam. And uh, I held two, I created and held two po- open mics, and they were at the Planet Perk. Okay. And uh, 
we haven't done one in a long time, and I'm thinking I'm I'm planning. I just have to talk to the owner, Ken, and say, and he's open to it. He's like, let me know, and we'll do it again. (laughs) Shout out to Ken. He's a good dude. (laughs) Yes, I've heard nothing but good things. He's really involved in the community. Yes, and Ken Ken's Ken's part of our vet community, so we got we got mad love for Ken. Yeah, and it was it's it was kind of cool to. Go and talk to him. He's like, do you want to do this? Sure, come talk to me. He, and uh, he's getting orders together. We're in the back room. And, well, so this is what you need. You need a microphone. And he goes types it up, Has everything had everything ready. And uh, it was a very nice evening. And uh, just a lot, quite a few people that I knew. And uh, somebody from Racine, a boy, Sharif, came. And uh, she's around in the community. She likes to do karaoke. And I, that's how I know. I think there's a slight difference with the slam versus, versus like an open mic. Open mic. Okay. And I think that I probably opened it up to more than just poetry, so that so that people that don't write poetry, maybe the people that write a short story or an essay or something, have an opportunity to 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 have an audience as well. You're giving voice. Yes. Yeah. I like that. Mm-hmm. That needs to happen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're just putting we're putting things on Tom's to do list here on the Kosh. Kosh <laughs> listeners, let Tom know that, and we're going to put Tom's email in the, yes. <laughs> in the uh, podcast details. Let them know we need this, and um, let them know what you're thinking and what you would like. Yeah, and um, so yes, and this is kind of my shout out is that the Oshkosh Poet Laureate is, uh, there's a email, <laughs> try to get that out, Oshkosh Poet Laureate, email, Poet Laureate at oshkoshpubliclibrary.org. You can email that email if you'd like to, your organization to have me come and speak or the next Poet Laureate come and speak. And uh, just for free, come and spread poetry. Um so yeah, so definitely contact and how you know whatever I, service I can be, I help you open set up an open mic and and be there. I, I'll do it. Sounds like, like it'll be a lot of fun. That's awesome. Okay. Um, anything else you'd like to add, Tom? Um, are we come to my our, our parting words of wisdom. No, we we got time. Oh, we got a little time, man. You're rushing. You're rushing straight to the end. You see, time was just trying to get it done. Nope, nope. We're not there. We're still. We're still on your main topic. If there's anything else you'd like to add, hmm. as far well as far as like the poetry and things like that, oh, we can. Anything you want to add? Okay, well, this is kind of um, uh, going to be shout outy again. Oh no, well, <laughs> we like shout outs here on the Kosh. I mean, that's how we do it. And uh, and so the, I'm thinking, just kind of what you reminded me of, like how it should be. We should have poems and and on the sidewalks and stuff. I'm absolutely for. Uh, that sounds like a great idea. I, uh, that'd be wonderful to have. It reminded me of a friend of mine who lived in Amro for many years. Uh, Lewis Clark the third and uh, he is half Polish and half Native American and he had several poems and his one that was actually very well known uh, the Wisconsin Historical Society published it it's how to be an Indian in the 21st century and he kind of encapsulates everything that a poet should be he you for many many years he worked for the road for the county road crew and so he would write, he'd have his poems printed up, he'd put it in a, a, in a baggie, and when they built culverts along in the ditches, he'd put his poems in there. And um, <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, it is. You know, and these road crew guys really enjoyed it. They enjoyed his poems. Um, and just fun poems, like, and one of them about drunken cows, Based on uh, <laughs> that, doesn't seem that far fetched in Wisconsin. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> but he was talking about somebody uh, got uh, like fermented corn. They feed it to their cows, and oh. so 
it's just an enjoyable poem, poem that, you know, it's fun, fun to read. And, uh, but then he also gets to the heart of the matter about, in his later books, How to Be an Indian in the 21st Century. And again, sharing his story, kind of taking control of it, and, and finding out what it was like to be growing up as a Native American in the 60s, you know. He found out that he was uh, an Indian because people, when he got to school, people beat him up and called him an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> That's crappy. <laughs> yes, it is. Wow, I don't even want to laugh at that, but I mean, no, I just, I'm, I didn't expect that. <laughs> well, I'm, yeah, I apologize for that. Yeah. And I think that he would, it, he, I think he would enjoy that, that it also elicited humor. That he, it was, to be funny and serious, and Lewis Clark, uh, that's him in a nutshell. Shout out to Lewis. Hmm. Okay. Um, well, you know what time it is? I'll tell you what time it is. It is the time where we start winding things down. All right, Kosh listeners, you know, we're, we're starting to wind the show down. Um, once again, as I like to tell you week after week, we are a work in progress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for spending time with us, taking some time to listen. Hey, just so you know, like we, the, the audience has grown. Um, and I'm starting to understand how to read my analytics, so maybe that's part of it. Um, you know, we've got people listening in about, um, I, if I'm correct, it's about 20 states. Oh. Um, yeah. And uh, all across the world in about, uh, I don't know, about 9 to 11 different countries. Like, seriously, like, so, gosh, listeners, understand, you're not you're not alone here listening and and. Um, paying attention and we appreciate you uh if you ever want to be a guest you already know i keep a 100 percent open door policy just ask we're all about it here at the kosh so just email at ask the kosh at gmail.com once again that is ask the kosh at gmail.com i'm hoping y'all are liking the new website because i think the website does a great job of uh centralizing all of the episodes and content but the Website's very much uh, a work in progress, and we're going to keep adding things. And the website is uh, thekoshpodcast.com. Once again, that is thekoshpodcast.com. Um, if you are linked up with us on Facebook, you know that I've got Kosh gear. That's right. Hats, T-shirts. Check it out. $20 each. Would love to see you guys wearing the stuff around the Kosh. I actually think it's going to be the hot farmer market gear uh, wearing the Kosh gear this summer. Because you know what? I can guarantee you this. I wear it, and every time I go out, someone's like, what's the Kosh? And then I get a chance to, to break it down to them, and they're like, for real? Like, seriously? Like, Kosh, Osh, Oshkosh is cool enough that you guys got a podcast that people, the individuals from Oshkosh, to come on and actually talk about it? I was like, yes. We do. So it's pretty, pretty cool. And the last thing you know, I'm going to say it one more time. Um, I'm working on my segment, but I've not had enough success, and I'm, I'm almost ready to let it go, but not quite. I'm going to say it one more week here. Um, I want to start a segment called Ask the Kosh. Please feel free to email or leave a voicemail. I love a voicemail instead of a question so me and the guests can talk it over um i've had two so far and one got lost in the digital abyss so i gotta still i'm still looking for that question um but i am gonna play it whenever i can find it and i don't know how i got lost in the digital abyss but nonetheless it did um that phone number is 920-385-9298 that is 920-385-9298 i need the questions uh and i addressed this episode, you don't know this yet, but I did address a question that I did receive the other one in the episode before this one recorded. So it's out there and it's a doozy. All right. Now we are moving on to the next segment, which is my favorite segment, which if y'all know me, you know what time it is. It is shout out time. All right, Tom, what you got for shout outs? This is where I promote myself a little bit. You can do whatever you want. It's uh, shout out time. I don't care who you shout out. <laughs> it's your shout outs. Okay. Um, and I can kind of tie this into the poet laureate that if you want more information about that, 
go to my website, thomascannonauthor.com, and uh, interact with me. Uh, again, the Oshkosh Poet Laureate Facebook group. So that it's just not about me, it's about poets. And um, if you guys check out my books, I have The Tower of Apathy and, uh, and uh, a new book that was pe- um, published December of 2021 called Shattered. And um, it's about a, a comic, a stand-up comic in the 90s who's a nice guy, but he kind of comes undone. Actually, Ooh. <laughs> that sounds about right for a comic. <laughs> yes, he kind of slowly defends, descends into madness. Um, and he kind of thinks he's turning into an animal. So it's it's out there. But uh, And then I also developed a chapbook called Wisconsin Time. Uh, just to kind of celebrate the poems that I've had published in di- various different places. Okay, that's awesome. All right. Anybody else? I mean, because you kind of did shout outs throughout the show. Is there anybody else you want to uh, recognize? Um, there, it, it, Ruth Percy at the Oshkosh Public Library always does a great job. Uh, I want to thank Mayor Palmieri for uh, creating this position. It, um, even even if I wasn't the person to be here, I still think it's a great thing to do and kind of forward thinking. All right. Agreed. All right. Um, all right. Shout outs. My this week's shout outs. Um, I'd like to send a shout out to uh, Allie, Allie Stribling. Um, she's an intern. Um, I met her the other day. What an amazing conversation. Um, the future looks bright is what I will say. And sometimes it's just nice to meet young people on their journey as they're becoming who they are and having really high level conversations, honest, authentic conversation. And she was just, she kind of blew me away. Yeah. I think people want to bash, you know, the young people, this generation, they don't know how to work, but there are amazing people that are wonderful, hardworking, have these great ideas and, uh, you know, they're, they're wonderful and they're, you know, they're really caring people. Very much so. So I agree the future does look bright. Future looks bright. Um, shout out to my man, Ryan Thompson. Hey, um, you know, every once in a while you're lucky enough to meet somebody and you didn't know that you were connected at a certain point in time. And I met this gentleman um, through some professional connections and sat down and we had coffee. And what I found out was, like, he ran in um, – kicked it with some of my really good friends from college and we knew like a bunch of people together and it was like oh my god we probably actually partied together um and we just had the best conversation so we started off in this professional place but by the time we were at the end of it it was just like oh my god dude we're friends (laughs) and that was just kind of a fantastic feeling um just through association so that was really really cool i appreciate you so big shout out to ryan um shout out to my man chris annis um you, you are my spiritual guide, man. You, you, you good looking out. I appreciate you, man. Uh, shout out to my friend, Sean Fay. Like Sean Fay is my man. Like he's, he is, uh, becoming like one of my best, best friends by far. Big, big shout out. And one shout out to Sherry. You know who you are, Sherry. Thank you for everything. Thank you just for being solid for almost 30 years now. I appreciate you. All right. Um, now, now is the time for, and you got a choice, Tom. So this is parting words of wisdom, but lately we've been offering another option. So you, you got three options. You could take a B or C, which is option a, you can give parting words of wisdom option B. The question is what would yourself of today tell your 12 year old self? Or you can do option C, all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I, I, I like, I love a challenge. <laughs> hey, look, hey, hey so it, it, however you want to finish off the episode. So tell me. All right. <clears throat> well, it, you know, when again, when Mayor Palmieri called me up and she said, you know, I want to, 
I want I want Amanda Gorman and and to help heal the heal our divide. I was like, you want what? No, <laughs> I mean, you got the wrong person. But you know, uh, but then I got to thinking about it, and uh, I'm really into uh, writing. I believe writing does amazing things, and there's many different um, skill. It doesn't need if you're not a writer. There's many things. There's scientists have looked at what are the habits of happy people and I can and I found myself relating to poetry any kind of writing is very conducive to um, to these happiness skills mm. and I think that if we can do these things which I'll name in a minute we're going to be happier people if we're happier people we're going to be nicer to people and then I do think that that will help us get over being so much in conflict, so divided, so angry at each other. And uh, so, you know, I just, like, again, like I said, you savor things, gratitude. If you can, if you write down every day, one, three, ten things that you're grateful for, that changes your mindset. If you can write a poem about things that you're really thankful in your life, that gratitude leads you to different pathway i think and again the savoring of it and even just working out your problems through writing it's a it, it's it can be almost like meditation and uh where in your right it's cathartic you have an emotional release and uh you kind of take control of your problems you can and for me you need people can be so stressed out nowadays, any days, and anxiety, and they got worries on their mind. And so, and I have worries. I've had you know on my mind, and for a long time, I've I've written it down. Okay, this is what's bothering me. This is the terrible thing I'm going through, and then I can close it up. I know I'm going to worry about it, but I can close it up. I can say, I'll come back to it because it's right there. I can pick up my worries, but for now, I can. Um, just relax, forget about it. So what I would tell myself, 12-year-old self, was, you know, just keep writing. <laughs> Everything's going to be all right. Uh, I like that. Just keep writing. Just keep writing. Okay. Well, uh, wait, let me, because I feel like that was a mix of, was that the mix of, was that the Ollie above? Did you pick C? Because I don't want to cut you off. Because uh, I don't know if you, you have more, because I get the feeling you might not be done. <laughs> I don't know that I could ever be done, but I think that was the completion. I'm worried that the longer I talk, the farther out there, like, the more muddy I'm going to get. <laughs> that... It is hilarious. <laughs> I love that. All right. They heard enough. All right. Well, what did you think, Tom? How was your, how was it? Oh, thank you for having me. This is a great time. Yeah. I knew I was going to enjoy it, but I just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this. I, I agree. You were, um, this was fun. Great conversation. Um, and let me just put this out there at the very end because I'm putting it at the end because I didn't want you to have a response to it. Um, we need a poem for the Kosh. Oh. <laughs> 